Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today, uh, you may wonder what it is we're recording because it's so tiny, <laughs> we're not going to be able to see it very easily. But Gaz, we've got Gaz here and he's hey. taking a look at the brand new Teenage Engineering. OPZ. Right. Yeah. Which is here. Which is here. And as you, as you say, it is tiny. Now, Teenage Engineering, obviously, they made their name with the venerable OP1. And actually, if we see... The OP1. It looks massive. <laughs> Compared. Well, look, I've got, we've got the remote control for our new <laughs> telly, which is bigger, bigger than that as well. And actually, this actually does look a bit like a remote control, doesn't it? Um, but some people were kind of a little bit disappointed when they saw this because they thought it was the follow-up to the OP1. In some ways it is, but it's not a replacement for the OP1. Right. Both devices are actually quite different. So what this is, is essentially a 16-track sequencer that's made up of Eight, mu eight instrument tracks and then eight variety of kind of performance tracks. Right. We'll look at that in a moment. Because when we first saw it, it was all video stuff that we were seeing, wasn't it? That's so. absolutely in there. We will look at that. Some of the tracks then are kind of... For visual type for stuff. visual right. type stuff, yeah. Something that the OP1 didn't have. Uh, there are a few similarities between the OP1. There are some synth engines that are the same. And if you'll notice, you know, the OP1 uses these, these four knobs to control everything and you go through some pages. Well, there's a similar thing like this where you go through pages as well. What are you noticing missing though off this? No screen. No screen. Now, yes, the OP1, one of the things that made the OP1 really special was its rather lovely OLED screen. Yeah, well, that was a big good deal. Mm -hmm. But it's also worth remembering it had micro USB connectivity. That shows sort of how old, long in the tooth it is. Yeah. Yeah. Micro, yeah. Uh, so not micro, mini. Mini, so I beg yeah, your pardon. Mini yeah. USB, yeah. Before the reign of the micro USB. Now, the only connectivity that we've got on the OPZ, physical connectivity, is a mini jack output plus... USB-C. USB-C. Right. Uh, there is, however, Bluetooth connectivity. And that features quite heavily in this, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll see that a little bit later. But just initially, just looking at this thing, what we've got here is... It's, 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 it's made of like a plastic, but it's a new formulation that's meant to feel like paper to the touch. Yeah. So it's kind of got this well, does. sort of touch. And these buttons, now these buttons look maybe not particularly robust, but actually they are robust. And you can hear as I'm playing these kicks, there's a good kind of punchiness to the sound. Yeah, the, D2, the D2A does sound pretty good, doesn't it? Well, let's have a listen to it. So I'm going to load in one of the demos. I quite like this one because it's got like a dirty Bristol drum and bass vibe. Yeah, in the house! <laughs> but, I mean, yes, as stereotypical as maybe the demos sound, they, they've, got, they've got a kind of, they're tight, aren't they? They're they're, the bottom end is really good on them. So the D2A sounds, does sound very good. And are there samples in here as well as synthesis engines, is that? Yes. And it's all a little bit confusing, as is the normal case with teenage engineering. But essentially, if we were to look here, our first eight tracks, we've got four drum tracks, right. which are all based on samples. And then we've got four sort of synth engine tracks, right. really. What I would say is, the OP1 is a bit more of a synthesizer. This does have that similar sort of synthesizer functionality, but this is more focused on the sequencer. This right. is really all about the sequencer, I think. That's that, that's its kind of killer feature. Right. So just briefly then, from left to right, we've got a kick track, then we've got a snare track, like hats and cymbals, and then... Oh, so they're, they're multi-timbral, some of those, right? Yeah, I think, yeah. And that's... You can play two steps, I think, of these sort of right. two. Um, now, the way it works is, what we've essentially got, if we go back to, let's say, the kick, for instance, is we've got, I can't remember how long it is, but it's the same, it uses the same OP1 So format. you have one sample with kind of Mar slices. Essentially like markers, markers, yeah. yeah like regions. Regions, yeah. So like the old Roland sampler method, yes. Yeah, yeah. So as I'm going through this, I'm like, it's almost like a wavetable in a way, yeah. aren't I? I'm just kind of moving through sort yeah. of uh, regions, sort of proper process, waveform. Right. Uh, and then, so for instance, then, if I wanted to change like if I hold the little track button on the left here, I've got here, I've got um, four different... Banks of, right, banks of samples, so. Yeah. So there is some onboard storage and that's... Yes. Right, okay. Uh, <laughs> but it's all a little bit odd, as we'll see later. Now, we talked about there being no screen over Bluetooth and to an iOS, currently iOS only. Yeah. And we will have a little whinge about that in a bit. Then on the screen, 
as we'll see later, you can kind of see everything. Right. So there's, but, a, there's a good editor. With there's it. a good editor, absolutely. But what I should mention, teenage engineering are ostensibly a design yeah, company. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So I think everything that they do is kind of uh, driven by a design ethos. Yeah. And I think in this particular case, a lot of that design it comes from. Um, the LED right, so lighting. That, these are all different colours. Multicoloured LEDs, and also these LEDs have got uh, variable brightness. And like for instance here, we can see this first parameter here. If I was to rotate the all the way to the left, right, the brightness goes. The brightness down, yeah. goes until it's like that. And then as I increase it, when it hits green, that's like the centre point. If it's a, you know. A right. parameter, and then as I go all the way over, as soon as it flickers, you're all the way because these are endless, these are rotary encoders. They're rotary encoders, yeah. and also about these encoders, I should mention these encoders. When you see them, you think they're completely flush. How on earth are they to turn? They turn with a beautiful feeling. Feel that, Nick. Just feel how nice yeah. they. I can confirm. <laughs> yeah, and. There so, are. I mean, the, the, the whole mm. thing about this, I mean, it, mm. as we said, it's very designed. And, and we've said this before, the yep. sweet, it seems to be a Scandinavian, a particularly Swedish way, because we've seen it with Electron. It's like they design this ecosystem that is is has a perfection in their eyes to it. But it does require, like, the outsider or the yep. novice, a lot of learning, right? Yes. So when you're learning this, I guess it makes sense to use it with, with, the, the, editor, with right. the editor, assuming that you've we'll got show you iOS. That. We'll, we'll definitely we'll show you we'll that, show in, a that in a bit. However, the, the, the learning curve comes from memorizing what all the uh, LEDs do. I should mention, you see, so the black, the black keys have got numbers one to zero. An example now at the back, there's four buttons at the back. These buttons like this, like a project button, a mixer button. Well, you can see the LEDs changing, uh, like a, a metronome button and a screen button. But now, without the screen connected, what the screen button does, the green light shows how much battery charge is there. Right, so okay. we're about, you know. Just over. So they've two. developed a sort of visual language of, of which is quite, it, it's quite uh, a, a common thing. And we've seen it in a few things recently where they're just using LED colors. Like the Sculpt, for instance, uses it and, yeah. and, the, and the modal. So it's yeah. you know, the language of mm. using LEDs, it's, mm -hmm. but they've obviously gone to a very high degree here. Yeah. So, I mean, if I hold down the program, if I hold down the sort of program select, this is either pattern or program P stands for. And we've got 10 projects or right. projects, yeah, projects of which each project can have um, 16 patterns. Right. OK. So in this particular project, we can see we've got, what, six six patterns. OK. And I'm going to go to a blank pattern, for instance. So, so I've chosen a blank pattern. So if I push play, helpfully, a blank pattern instantly inst instigates the, uh, the metronome, which I think is pretty cool. Metronome, if I hold this down, this shows these numbers here. As I just hold the metronome down, we'll see just flick across the, the lights here one, two, seven. We're in uh, one, two, seven BPM. One, two, seven BPM. You can see yeah, without there's a screen. A, there's a, yeah, there's, we're you, getting a lot of information. And as I change my, this is quite fun. Four, three, four, one, two, three, four, Hang on. Five, I like four, I like the Italian five, guy. Four, two, three, four, two, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Express. <laughs> oh yeah. There we go. Sorry. 90s reference there, 90s folks. Reference. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's very teenage engineering, being able to dial yeah. in a, t a metronome in different languages. I, I mean, it looks like it's an incredibly deep and detailed thing with, an, for someone like me, perhaps mm. an infuriatingly complicated <laughs> and impenetrable interface. Right. Would that be a fair comment? <laughs> this isn't a cheap device. No. £530, more or less, thereabouts. So that's a lot of money. And as we'll see now, whether that's worth the money will certainly depend on the what? person, really. Now, what I will mention, when you get into the sequencer, this thing has got turbo functions in the sequencer, the right. likes of which we have actually never seen before. If you think about Electron, Electron really made their name with parameter locking. And conditional trigs. And conditional and... trigs. Well, this has got very much those kind of things plus. So, our 16 tracks, like I mentioned then, we've got kicks, snare, hi-hats, then, uh, and samples, then we've got bass, lead, arpeggio, and chord tracks. So I use my track select, and I'll say I go to my bass select now. And these have got bass sort of en synth engines in Yeah, there. these are not samples, these are sort of synth engines. And the amount of synthesizer control you've got is essentially this. You've got two 
macro controls, I guess. You don't know what these are. They're parameter one and parameter two. Um, and like with the filter, for instance. Okay, when that's sounding a bit more meaty. And I, with that filter, there we go. When it hits green, then it's actually equidistance between a low pass filter and oh, a high okay. pass filter. Right. So you've got both in there. But what these do it just is a mystery the... and they change. Now, as I hold down this track select, we can see one to six lets us choose different synth engines. Now we don't know looking up this, what these synth engines are. With the editor, you can see that a little right. bit. But as I change a synth engine, the, li the lights along the bottom here are presets within that synth engine. Uh, okay. So, so if I choose a second synth engine, we've got a bunch of pr uh, presets here. That's, that's beefy enough. So mm. can you record in real time against the metronome or is yeah. it just step only? Yeah, no, real time, so. So that's 16 steps. It's 16 steps. But and how, can you can you Absolutely, yeah. You can you can't do additional bars. The way to do different bars is change the step length. Ah, so you got 16 step resolution. Not quite. Oh, okay. Because of when we get into step components, right. we can change what each of the how many beats and different things that there are. Okay, per well step. let's rewind. So you've mm. recorded those notes in there. Can mm -hmm. you record like parameter changes and stuff for all of those? Yeah, absolutely. So you know. So we can do that in a bunch of ways. You know, we could do this. I could hold hold record. Okay. So right. I've recorded the parameters in there. In, in But also what I could do is I could hold a step and then I could, and Attach usefully, it sounds it'll you sound. Get... You'll get a preview of the sound of it. That's really useful, actually. Okay, so now when you play it, Right, okay. Yeah, that, I mean, that seems fairly straightforward. That's cool. Now, you said about step length. At the moment, if I hold down my track control and shift, now we can see one up to zero gives us options to change like how long these patterns like last for. So if I set four, play it. <laughs> right. Etc. So the divisions see. between the mm. steps. And you can make it really long. And then I mentioned step components. Step components. Now these are very complicated to understand. I'd recommend watching Cook, who's done like an hour-long tutorial video. <laughs> an hour long, folks. Just, just, like just for just dealing <laughs> the, with the step components. Let's not go there. But yeah, so, so it is mm -hmm. incredibly complex. But mm. yes, we do get the ability to see the editor on the iOS. Yes, you do. do. Let me talk a little bit about step components. I will try and keep this as brief as possible. What it essentially means is each of these steps that you've placed down on, onto, the, onto the thing, if you hold down Shift and select one, it'll turn green. Once it's green, you can then select all the white keys. They have a little icon above them, like this one here that says X2, for instance. That'll be um, that'll be like a multiplier, like a ratchet. Right. So now I've set, like it's defaulting to two. As I play it, you'd... right. So you've got two. Up. Yeah. Right. So you've got ones that take the pitch, that'll ramp the pitch up, the ramp, ramp the pitch down, that'll pick a random note or... Um, right. So you, get, you can get some quite generative sort of stuff. Absolutely. Quite easily. And these three at the end here, these are called spark in OPZ terminology. In electron terminology, that's more like your conditional trigs. Right. Uh, you can say every six that, that note will only play every year. Yeah. yeah. When you pick a step, you can add... <laughs> Multiple. Multiple steps on. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> there's some random stuff in there. Yeah, as well. so you can stack up these. So when you start to look at these ones that can, um, like, like these ones here, they like Ratchet, they'll add extra beats, right. but rather than them slot in, it'll extend the bar length right. out. And then you can choose those to happen. Every on random on times, okay. or, so you can imagine then, once you start to actually combine all these step components together, you start to get really strange evolution of, so even though we've essentially only got our 16 steps going on, you can have these steps maybe last in eight bars, all sorts of random things happening. It really is something quite special. However, it's not for the faint-hearted. Yeah. You do need to sort of dig in and learn about it. Well, we were talking earlier, weren't we? It's a bit like doing, a, it's almost like gaming. 
You're learning, it's getting to, you know, finishing the game is learning how the thing works. This is like a game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, teenage engineering, you know, think about the pocket operators very much like the Nintendo Game & Watch. I've got, yeah. a, I've got a lot of influence of the game world in Which there. is probably why you see quite a divisive audience, don't you? I mean, yeah. I mean, some, some of the teenage engineering stuff we've reviewed have been mm -hmm. some of the highest viewed stuff that yes. we've got. Yeah. But it's also probably the most sort of <laughs> diametrically opposed in the comments. Some people love it, some people hate it. I know a lot of our uh, um, participants actually love the OP1, mm -hmm. but this might be just a little that abstract too far for them even. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's, it possibly is an age thing a little bit with this. And I think I might be slightly on the older part of the, the demographic. Um, yeah, my job in this review is to be the grumpy old git who who says, why, why <laughs> do I want this? What's it for? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just wanted to get that out there. Um, okay, so... Yeah. Uh, we've got yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, I suppose. So, so yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. this becomes like a kind of you know you could think eight tracks is quite limiting. However, once you start to combine all the different functionality within it, then these tracks all become a lot more interesting. So I said we went through here. So we had like a bass track. Now we could jump to you know we've got like a lead track, and again these things Some are based there as well, on aren't there? yes. And this is one of the things that's actually different from the OP1. Um, each of our tracks has two effect sends, and the two effects are configurable. Are, gl are they global, the two? Yes, they're right. global, two global effects. But those effects, actually, they get their own tracks. And on their own tracks, you it can means then automate that, you can it? automate the parameters of the wow. effects. Lots of stuff. Imagine with an external MIDI controller and a proper keyboard, like, mm -hmm. um, this might actually, you know, you might see a bit more... Uh, uh, easier to interact with in some respects. Yeah, we'll do this a little bit later. We'll right, demonstrate okay. this. Very good point. However, just flicking through all these tracks, so yeah, so we've got an arpeggiator track. The arpeggiator, I should mention that you've got four parameter pages per synth sound, as I say, and, and designated by the colored lights. White, synth parameters. Green is a envelope, just an amplitude yep. envelope. Um, in this case, because I'm on an arpeggiator, it's blue, and these are ARP settings, and then there's like a kind of yellowy orange, which are a mix of settings, two effect sends, a pan, and a volume control. Uh, if I was to choose a different track, that third page is purple on, on the other ones because that's an LFO. So you lose your LFO when you're using the arpeggiator. Right, okay. So that's the one thing. Now that's it in terms of synthesizers. You can't get into the into the nitty gritty and choose what the what the macros are. So people who are like real sound designers, Might uh, not, be, yeah. not so much. Right. However, the different engines respond differently, and and really, it's a lot about exploratory. Just you don't know what they do. Turn them, you know, it's okay. suck, suck it and see type of thing. Okay. We're flipping through the track still. <laughs> and then we come to a thing called the tape track. I'll just go to a new, uh, one of the demos in a moment. Okay. So I'm going to go to the tape track now. What it is, is like a buffer. It's like a little audio buffer. Right, so it's like yep. a slicer, yeah. Like a slicer. The black keys choose how long the slices are, and then the, the white keys choose kind of where those slices are. Now that kind of becomes quite cool because, because it's a track, it's a sequenceable thing, so you know I could punch a put I could punch a, a bunch of steps in here, for instance. Right. Okay. So you can sequence that kind of stuff. So are you saving this as you go along, or is it does that automatic? <laughs> like... Very good point. Those of you who've used the OP1 will know that the OP1 is in a constant state of always save. As soon as you just turn one knob, that's right. how it is. And that can be really cool, because it just is a very instantaneous thing. But also... It could be really bad, because you forgot to save when, or you, you, lend were, it when to, you have you lend it. it to a friend and you say, oh yeah, don't touch anything. anything. <laughs> <laughs> this, however, I think they've perhaps learned from uh, that. It will default, it's a default state is to be the same as the OP1 where, and this applies to all those demos, as soon as you just tweak something, you've permanently changed it. However, you can, uh, I think you should hold down P and th this, yeah. Uh, but that mode there, I was gonna say, puts it into manual save mode. Right, and then okay. manual save mode, you hold down P and then you press and long hold, a bit like a radio, right, okay, sort of a car radio style to save something. And speaking of that, aspect as well. Holding down P and hitting uh, the plus will take an instant snapshot of all the tracks and their current settings. Holding down P and minus will take you to that snapshot. So there's only like one snapshot but you that could you can sort do. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, so can, you can put it in the bank. You can put it in the bank. You've got something going. It's nice. Lock it down. Hit that, that uh, P and there. And then mess it up. 
get it wrong, it's all going wrong. Or improve it, and then you save over it again. Oh yeah, improve or, it, or, save it again, or you can jump back right, to that okay. point. Yeah. yeah. We've got as far as the tape track. Now, the next in line is the master track. Now, I think this is one of the great, absolutely mind-blowing um, aspects of this. On the master track, what you can do is you can sequence key changes, mode changes, and various things. All right. And then that's especially good when you set the when you set it to change over time. I'll demonstrate this. I'll load in a pattern that I created earlier. Oh. Yeah. So it's just that's 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 the pattern. Okay. So if I was to go here and just choose this. Here and choose. I'm just going to just 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 guess a bunch of things. So those are transposing, effectively. And they're not just transposing. In this is, they're not just doing hard transpose. They're making a musical judgment based on an analysis, mostly based on what the bass track is doing, I guess, to establish right. what the root is, but also based on what any harmony is. Oh, it tries wow. to work okay. out what is the kind of fundamental key that it's working in. So when you put these changes in, they're actually, it's actually modulating the key in a, in a musical way. So you can hear that, like as these changes. So, but that means you can take like a four bar pattern or a 16 beat pattern and then yes. just transpose it over. Yeah, yeah. And that's where it's great, you know, like I've extended in this particular case, what I've done now. Um, yeah, I've got it running like almost the, the, the longest it can, it yeah. can be. So you, you, so you can, can yeah, so, that, it's, like a, it's like a polyrhythmic thing. Almost. Yeah. Right. And, and the whole polyrhythmic or polymetric side of things, you know, all the tracks you can set to run at all different lengths. And again, when you put the step components in, it, it just like concertina patterns. So your single pattern right, okay. ceases. So, so that master track allows you to do those. And process. remember, all of this then, it's all in the context of just one of your 16 patterns. Right. And each pattern can have all different master track stuff in there. Wow, okay. So you start seeing how you can start to build up. Incredibly complex stuff. Incredibly complex stuff. Assuming you've stuff. got the patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I will say though, this design language, if you will, of the of the of the uh, LED lights, the colours, and the way they work, the way, as I say, we saw it filling up, the way that the little light, you know, all of these different things in time. Yeah, you have to put the time in. You have to put the time in. And I know in. you have spent quite a lot of time learning. This. <laughs> I have. Um, yeah. So anyway, so we're flicking through the tracks. We get to the. This will be familiar to people who, uh, with the pocket operators, you know, punching effects where. Um, <laughs> Right, okay. So we've got a bit of PO stuff. All right, yeah. well, we better... And then your final three tracks. These are the really peculiar tracks because they've got no musical uh, value at all. They are more to do with visuals. The video stuff, yeah. right, okay. Or this one here, this third one here, is the module track. And uh, the module is something that's currently not in use because the module's not available. But there is a, a replaceable little snap, -in thing, snap -in yeah. module, and I, you know, there's a CV module come in. Right. And then Which you so you could use it to work with. That yeah. would be quite interesting to use as a sequence modular equipment. I thought I could Absolutely. see where that might, mm. where that would really um, work for people. And then the second to last one is a DMX sequence. Wow! So you can do the lights. So you can sequence your we lights. Plug it into our system here, and uh, you got DMX here. It. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> I've got a DMX USB a DMX interface though. Ah, okay. And then finally, we've got motion at the end here. Yeah. And that kind of works in two ways, either for sequencing photographs or for controlling a Unity game engine. Right. And you can have all sorts of bizarre and interesting manipulations to that. So you see, those 16 tracks, it's very unusual, isn't it, to have those divided in such yeah, a way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What I will say, and this is kind of very cool, I think, all 16 tracks over MIDI, regardless of their designation, are 16 MIDI, MIDI track sequencer. sequencer. So, Issuing all the internal sounds and functionality, just using it purely as a MIDI sequencer, you've got a very capable and very interesting MIDI controller because, of course, a lot of the step components are going to work over MIDI. Okay, so uh, this is, as you can tell, there's a lot of stuff to get through on this. So I think we're going to split this review up into several parts. So that would be the, the sort of first overview. Uh, next up, uh, we'll look at connectivity and working with the outside world. See you in a bit.